All right, so we got a 2004 Chevy Trailblazer, 4L60 transmission. I've got an 1810 code in it. It has to do with the uh, transmission fluid pressure switch. Um, here's your code and here's your valve. We're not worried about these, uh, these up here. This is the description, transmission fluid pressure valve. Um, but anyway, the 1810 code, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Um, and, and some things to look for uh, when you go in to try and fix this, this code. So let's get into it here. I've already dropped most of the pan boats down, letting the fluid drain. Um, I didn't want to have uh, fluid all over everything while I was trying to shoot this video. So let's, uh, let's get the pan the rest of the way down. And like I said, I've drained most of the fluid out, but not all of the fluid, so there's still maybe a little mess here before we get done. Um, this transmission doesn't want to shift. Uh, it will shift sometimes, but most of the time it just doesn't want to shift. It doesn't want to shift. If it makes the shift, then it'll shift back up and down and just kind of kind of all over the place. Um, but anyway, we're going to change this switch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here real quick. Let me get this pan out of the way. All right. Right up here is a switch that you're wanting to change. That's your pressure switch. Inside of here, when I get this down, I'll show you inside there, there are, uh, you'll wanna unplug this. Now, it's not necessary to have to pull the filter off if you don't want to change your filter if you don't have the money to change your filter uh, but if you do make sure that you pull straight down on this filter you don't want to pry on it too much if you can keep from it just kind of work it down out of there um, I've seen people break this neck off up in that pump and that's hard to get out of there and then you have a fear of a little piece of that getting up in there and getting in your pump you don't want that you don't want, want anything like that happening. So just make sure that, uh, that you don't have any problems with that neck, uh, breaking that filter or anything like that. So let me get my tools here and we'll pull that down off of there. I'll show you where the, where the pressure comes in and, and how it recognizes the pressure that's there. So, uh, I don't have my my gun that I usually use to get these off with, so I'm just gonna do it by hand here. Just pull those three 10 millimeter bolts. And then the other two are eight millimeter bolts. These two here. These are eight millimeter. And this is your pressure switch. Now, before I go any further, always, always inspect these wires to see if you don't see anything wrong with your switch. Then go back up and inspect these wires and make sure that there's not a broken wire. Um, you know, the, the, before you pull that down, just make sure that there's nothing wrong with that, that wiring on that plug in. Um, <clears throat> you have a plug that goes into the top of the transmission on this side. You can see the, where the wires are going up. Just make sure you don't have any problems with that wiring up in there. Uh, but the way that this vehicle was coding, um, if you run a lot of codes like we do here, uh, a lot of a lot of different tests you can pretty much tell when it's an electrical code because it will code immediately uh, this vehicle wasn't coding immediately i had to drive it a few times and then it would code so uh, usually when it does that it comes back to bend the switch but if it codes immediately just as soon as you turn the key on or start it up then it could be something 
uh, in the electrical wiring. Uh, now I see something I don't like here, but I'm not going to talk about that uh, at this point. At the end of the video here, I'm going to show you something that I don't like. If you see something like this in your transmission, you're going to you're going to want to make sure that you uh, uh, let that fluid drain as much as you can. But anyway, these are your pressure switches. You can see right here how the rubber has gone off of this. Uh, this seal right here is, is ate up. Uh, I think this one's bad. This one looks like it's bad. These can't hold pressure. It's gonna throw your pressure off and your computer's not gonna know how much pressure, where to put the pressure, uh, because these sensors are, are not holding pressure. So I'm gonna, uh, after this, here, I'm going to take this in the office. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to show you something I don't like what I see that could mean there's bigger problems in this transmission. So, okay, uh, let's put the other one on. I always soak them in fluid. I don't know why I soak everything in fluid. It's going back in a transmission, but uh, here's your new one. And you just put your to I like to just start everything and then and then tighten everything up as I'm going guys whenever y'all go to buy a filter for this if you're going to change your filter you know if your filter's clean if your fluid's clean it may not be necessary but it's a good time to go on and do that while you got the pan down um, if you haven't serviced your transmission recently but if you have serviced it and then you're and then you're just needing to, to replace this switch then you may not want to go buy another filter kit if you've already already serviced it so um but anyway i'm going to show you something about this filter you're going to want to make sure of when you go when you go to buy your your filter kit so just things to watch out for. That's what we want to do here so that you don't end up in trouble. Plug it back up. That job is done. This filter, this is a, a what they call a deep pan filter. And you see uh, how, how it drops down. They make a shallow pan filter for the early models. Make sure that you get the right application. If you take yours off, it's got a deep pan filter Make sure a deep pan filter goes back on it. Um, I'll show you how you can tell. You can tell by looking at the pan. You see that dip? I'm gonna go ahead and pour this fluid out because I am changing it all. You see this pan, how it makes this little cut right here? This is a deep filter. If this pan went straight across, if it was flat on the bottom, if there was no groove here, if it was just flat all the way across, then it would be a shallow filter. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you get the right application. I have seen people put a shallow filter on a deep pan and that doesn't work very well. So um, anyway, please subscribe. I hope this video helps you. Uh, hold on just a second. I am gonna I am gonna talk about something I saw here that that you might want to, to to hang on and and watch. So, all right, guys. Uh, I was pulling that switch off, and I seen something that kind of alarmed me. It makes me worry about the rest of the transmission. I'm going to show you what it was. Uh, whenever you see uh, these rubber seals like this, where they look like they have been. Um, you know, if it was just one, it wouldn't buy, it wouldn't worry me too much. But because it's two and three, uh, I think someone has overdosed this transmission with some uh, some aftermarket uh, products. Uh, aftermarket products are good if they're used in the right way, but sometimes people uh, will overdose these transmissions. They'll think, you know, well, if a, if a quart of it makes it shift good, then two quarts would have to make it work even better. That's not the way that product is designed, and, and sometimes if you overuse it, this is what you end up with. Uh, it looks to me like that, that it has weakened the seals down, 
and it has um, uh, caused these seals to start to deteriorate and collapse. Uh, and and that's what will happen if you overdose these transmissions with aftermarket uh, with aftermarket stuff. There, there are some good products out there that really helps your shift valves. There's good products out there that will soften these seals up, make them last a lot longer than they normally would. Uh, the bad part about it is if you put too much of this product in there, you're going to cause your transmission failure because these seals uh, you're weakening them down, you're softening them up too much, and that's what's what looks like happened here. This transmission uh, that I'm showing you this on has a burnt smell in the fluid, and I am going to go ahead and, uh, uh, and because it, I'm going to put this on, I'm going to check it out, but I have a feeling this transmission is going to have to be rebuilt. But uh, yeah, if you see something like this, uh, you may prepare yourself for uh, for maybe a rebuild in the future because some, if these seals are done this, then more than likely the, the seals throughout the transmission uh, in the pistons and things like that and uh, uh, the clutch packs are doing the same thing. So I just wanted to share that with you and I hope this video helps you. Please subscribe.